Black Clover, one of the most hated new series since Fairy Tale. Let's talk because I've caught up to episode 34 of Black Clover and I got a lot to say about Black Clover. That's how it be though. Nothing but great effort just to get a C though. Eyes watching but we never seem to be though. So honestly, Black Clover truly is one of the most hated. A, a good majority of people that I hear, they always hate on it this and that. We've covered the hate train on Black Clover. But I personally went through about 10 or 15 episodes since the last time I watched Black Clover. I marathon watched it and there was a whole bunch of stuff that happened. Now, Black Clover doesn't continue some of the same tropes does it continue some of the same BS? I will say right now, things are starting to turn from my perspective of Black Clover initially. And for the longest, I was just kind of like, eh, you know, it has its problems, but I enjoy it for what it is, whatevs. But man, oh man, catching up with Black Clover, I think the anime is finally finding its way. It's finally figuring out what it wants to be and it's doing better job of showcasing certain elements than even the manga did back then because now one of the good things about the anime, because in case you don't know the difference between the Black Clover anime and manga is that the anime adds a lot of things and makes things slower. The manga goes really quick and lacks a lot of depth and explanation. Now the point where the anime does those things of adding context and you know giving more bits here and there is actually benefiting Black Clover and it's doing a better job of some of the parts than the manga did at this point now because Black Clover has been a rocky start you know the beginning there was a lot of filler it felt very sluggish similar to what they did with Boruto in the beginning it was kind of like yo what wh wh where y'all aiming with this and I think that that's the problem that a couple of shonen under the belt of Studio Periot have been having is that they're taking these action series. People go to Boruto regardless of what. They're going to Boruto based off their experience with Naruto with an intent of I want action. I want cool stuff happening. They go to Black Clover. Okay, this is supposed to be the king of shonen. The new king of shonen as titled by Crunchyroll. They want action. They want really cool stuff happening. And Black Clover took a bit of time to get to that point. It took a bit of, you know, okay, sluggish stuff happening. We're in Hodge Village. Little by little. Now it's actually taking off like a rocket. Let's go to the arc for starters where I really felt like, yo, Black Clover's really showing its stuff now. And that's where the whole zombie, seemingly zombie invasion where we had some of these villains attacking the village and we even had to see some of the captains step in and fight on behalf of the kingdom and then they even got zapped away. I felt as though that showcased a huge level of threat finally because, you know, Black Clover was kind of like, okay, so there's villains that are getting dusted off by Yuno himself and Yuno's a, a brand new, you know, he's, he's a noob. He just got into the Golden Dawn. So you're looking like, Where's the real threat? We had the Diamond Kingdom. We wrapped that up. You know, Mars was a really cool addition. And that's where it truly started to pick up. But then we go to this zombie arc. Again, I got to keep using it loosely. And one of the best things that I felt really showcased the level of danger and the threat was what happened to Fuegoleon. Because all of the captains of the Magic Knights, you know, they got zapped away far away. And it was up to kind of Fuegoleon to hold it down alongside his little brother and Asta. And I mean, you had Noel there, but you know, no, Noel can't do too much. And Fuegoleon taking the massive L that he did. That manly man. Because I ain't gonna lie, I ain't gonna show him Fuegoleon. Like, he got kind of trapped and tricked or whatever, but he, he was still a monster when he was doing. The trap that they did and leaving him laid out, missing an arm. That was crazy because, you know, especially for a series like Black Clover, a lot of people are doubting it. A lot of people are saying, what's really there? You know what I'm saying? To see one of the head guys, you know what I'm saying? He's one of the leaders. He's one of the strong guys. Lose an arm kind of early on in the 20s or whatever, and that's going to be everlasting. That is freaking awesome. And I think that that showcase, okay, these people aren't playing around. They're, they're not a, a joke, especially when you see that even the Hokage-esque guy, you know, the Magic Emperor, Julius, jumping in to kind of, you know, help the situation and help Asta. There's a lot of things that is starting to look like, yo, is this foreshadowing this? And is this foreshadowing that? And then, of course, throwing in an elements because a lot of people, even though they don't necessarily like mystery series, they like having mystery within their series. And the fact of that there's a traitor in the kingdom, similar to what My Hero Academia is going through, where they're seemingly a traitor or whatever, it's really interesting because it's kind of like, where do you begin? Where do you start? Okay, is it one of the captains? Is it, you know what I'm saying? Is it the magic emperor himself? Is it one of the, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know at this point because there's so many characters. That's one thing with Black Clover that is hard for me to remember the names because there's 
a bit sometimes of too many characters. Sometimes I'm just kind of like, whoa, there's a lot of characters. So, uh, you know, <laughs> in that regard, it's like, where do we even begin with this investigation of who's the traitor? Who, what, what's going on? And then, of course, honestly, there's just so many highlights that I just want to talk about to really showcase like, yo, Black Clover's that shit. When the Magic Emperor has to step in and fight Lich, which right now, there's no bigger, like Mars was dope, Mars was cool, the fight against Mars was awesome, but Mars wasn't touching that level. The villains that we had, you know, the people that was, you know, the guy that was rising up the zombies or whatever and shit like that, he wasn't much. But when Lich showed up, the leader of the Eye of the Midnight Sun, when that dude shows up, when the Magic Emperor is like, holy shit, even, it's tough for him to really gauge what's going on and he barely could do anything against him. He got his arm a little bit hurt you know lich whatever but nevertheless it was like whoa when the magic emperor is like kind of giving props then you know something is afoot and something's not right so definitely that was one of the points where it was like there's things to worry about now you know what i'm saying mars was cool again but getting to lich and i, I hope i'm saying his name right lich to light I, I believe it's something to do with like you know the light and then you know the counterpart to the darkness or whatever and his beliefs and all that he just seems like an interesting villain off rip like he's crying out of nowhere and he feels he's in the right i love when villains feel like what they're doing is justice because that's their form of justice and whatever why he's doing this who knows whatever but that was a nice starting way then we get into the kidnap kids arc i'm not even gonna lie i don't know what it is because i read it in the manga of course but i will say this and this is morally me speaking i feel very uncomfortable watching gauch or, or gauch uh, gauch however you pronounce his name i feel a bit uncomfortable watching him and his whole little quirk to me is just wrong and nasty i'm not gonna lie just as a man i feel very uncomfortable with that like i get it it's supposed to be a joke this and that i understand his love for his sister but when it, eh, the nosebleeds and shit like that it, it creeps me the hell out i ain't even gonna lie like it creeps me out more than it should like i i i wouldn't want somebody watching black clover when gosh is on the screen okay like that's just Nah, I wasn't feeling it. He's cool with his powers, and it was nice to see the character development that he had throughout that mini arc of rescuing the children from these creeps or whatever. Like seeing him going from he just cares about him and his little sister Madi to all of a sudden, holy shit, you know, he's helping out Asta, and then what happened with the nun and shit like that. It was cool to get character development. I still find his quirk a, a, a bit creepy. Sally, though, Sally, which uh, I guess a little tidbit of things people don't know like for starters the previous series to black clover from the same author was hungry joker asta was a reuse of the main character from hungry joker Haiji, and sally her design is a complete reuse from chitose from hungry joker just a uh, food for thought there her insanity i love characters like that and i'm starting to see it it's interesting black clover and my hero they have a lot of similarities so if people like my hero they could possibly like black clover as long as you're not in that mentality of like expecting it to be the highest written but i will say even as far as quality of writing even that's improved and we're only in the 30s yeah it took a bit or whatever my hero from jump was pretty straightforward of good writing but even that has picked up but when you got a girl like sally that is very similar to like a toga and i don't know who came first or whatever but i gotta say yo yeah sally for the win baby like yo sally using her powers and then being ruthless turning that dude into a monster i mess with sally yo she's she's one of the top dogs for me as far as that group of villains goes so that was a cool bit um the nun thing took me by surprise i did not expect to see the nun get because i honestly forgot a lot of things from the manga it's been a couple years since i read it that was really awesome and again it shows the level of threat which is something a lot of other series really aren't doing that much. Like, there's not much of a level of threat where characters are actually taking L's for Goleon losing his arm, the nun getting fucking shot up with light arrows or light beams through the chest and shit like that. I didn't expect to see that. Again, it's, it's been a while. I forgot a lot of this stuff happened. So it's showcasing there is something to be afraid of outside of the walls of this place when even the magic captains like you know they're, they're assholes nozzle and, and all the the people of the silver group or whatever they're straight up you know bad <laughs> you know what i'm saying they're just they're wrong or whatever but for even them to feel disgraced at the l that they took at the hands of those people it showcases again there's something to be scared of now one of the latest episodes i think it's interesting to see that black clover episode 34 the latest one that dropped today i watched it this morning was the best episode of the entirety of the series. Like, how do you do that? You know what I'm saying? One of the latest episodes. You have Yami versus Lich. That was, oh my God. 
for starters, it brings up a lot of questions because if the Magic Emperor was kind of, you know, a little bit worried about this guy, Litz, then they kind of had their little squabble real quick or whatever. And Yami is kind of putting in the works. It makes you really wonder, like, how strong is Yami? And why are the Black Bulls looked down upon if Yami is capable of such incredible feats that even they kind of seem similar to the Magic Emperor's strength? You know what I'm saying? Like, Magic Emperor and him, like, you know, Litz and them were looking at it like, yo, he's not that far off. So you got to wonder, why is it that Yami, the Black Bulls, whatever, aside from their laziness, is it just the laziness why the Black Bulls are looked down upon? Because they have that I don't care attitude, which, by the way, when Yami showed up and he did that funny joke of, Ah, uh, yeah, I was just looking for directions. And he's like, no, I was kidding around that. So, like, I, I love Yami. Like, honestly, if you are going to watch Black Clover and have any favorite character, it's probably going to be Yami. And if you're going to have a favorite villain, it's probably going to be Lich. That, that dude is freaking sick. And the fight that they had was incredible, giving a little bit of adding more to the world. Because, of course, it's a magical world. Black Clover is based on magic. But when he brought forth the idea of Key, which it's clear as day, Yami is from Japan. Like, you know, the land of the rising sun. Every Everything that was said where he comes from he's more than likely you know he's from japan using a sword and everything which they, they're gonna do you know what i'm saying they have that japanese pride of course the author's gonna make the japanese character the guy that comes from japan be the most badass because he was just putting in work and oh my god the art and animation black clover has really picked up and i think that that's one of the big things that i wanted to stress to people similar to if you checked out my boruto video but Black Clover right now is tied in terms of enjoyment. Enjoyment, not quality, because I know people, and even though I'm saying this, it's almost like I'm wasting because people are still going to say, you don't know what you're talking about. In terms of enjoyment, Black Clover is equal to as my favorite right now with My Hero. Those two, My Hero Academia and Black Clover, and it's funny because those are the two that are battling out to be the king of, the new king of Shonen or whatever, but... I'm just having an incredible time with it. The writing has picked up. The suspense is at an all-time high right now because it's like, okay, who is this guy from, you know what I'm saying, the leader of this group, Lich or whatever? How is he this strong? What is his motives and goals? Why is he crying? Like, he de he definitely cares about his people. Like, you know, he was crying. He, he put Sally away or whatever. He sent her back to wherever they come from. The other dude got hurt. He starts crying and shit like that. Very interesting character, Yami, incredible, incredible fight showcasing that he probably could throw hands with the Magic Emperor. He, he might be close to around there to be able to put Julius down, just saying, whatever. And then everything before that, the Fuegoli on losing his arm, just Black Clover, incredible. Honestly, has really picked up. I highly recommend if you can get through some of the earlier parts again, the going even the return to Hodge village with you know you know and shit like that which i think it's a cool thing when they put you know on the back burner similar to like a naruto when sasuke will be away and then when he comes back it's like exciting not that you know is anything like sasuke even though he has some similar traits or whatever it's cool when okay we don't see him for a while then when we see him again bam it'll be cool and awesome again but like black clover freaking awesome i'm kind of curious though what do you guys think if you've been following black clover do you think that the anime has improved immensely again 34 episodes and i gotta say black clover is really especially marathoning it and i think marathoning anime is so much more of a better experience because i've fallen behind on a lot of anime and marathoning them down to the things that i used to complain about a lot like one piece i i, I complain about one piece a lot i know this black clover video but marathoning anime is a super different experience and maybe that's why i'm even more gung-ho about black clover because it was just absolutely incredible from sally to litz to yami to for Goleon, his little brother the jokes of his little brother wanting to be asked his rival all of it absolutely insane but what do you think about black clover thus far and if you are on the fence or you absolutely hate black clover would you give it another chance again the 34 episodes, if you watch those 34 episodes, which pretty much if you gave One Piece a chance back in the day and you went to the Arlong Park, which starts about 30, this is about right there where I truly believe anybody will at the very least have a great time and enjoy Black Clover because it's picked up a lot and it's freaking exciting and I think Periot is finally finding its way. It's a shame other series like, you know, Boruto took a lot longer to get to that point, but nevertheless, Black Clover on fire, Lich, Yami, who do you think, what is Lich's goal overall to do this? Who do you think is the traitor in the kingdom that is kind of giving out info and shit like that? Do you think Fuegoleon is going to be as strong without that arm and your overall thoughts and excitement, Black Clover, baby, my Black Clover squad, we might be similar in the anime fandom to the Black Bulls of like we're the black sheeps of it, but I gotta rock with it. Black Clover, for better or worse, it is entertaining and exciting, and I'm happy to say that Black Clover is definitely starting to make its way through to becoming truly where it needs to be. Like, if we're comparing it to a fairy tale, there's not even a quarter of the BS that goes on in fairy tale in Black Clover thus far, so.
kudos to that too but that is all i have for this one thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you liked anything i had to say or enjoyed the video drop me a like i'd greatly appreciate it and if you want more from me make sure to subscribe follow me on twitter instagram stalk my facebook and follow me on twitch to get more when the video ends i'm for world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life boy bow have an awesome day Check out that black clover, baby. Yami versus Lich was lit. We make a major move. Laughing at the haters lose.